Steelers Nation, buckle up for a ride through the twists and turns of Pittsburgh's football saga. Week 11 dealt a hefty blow to the Steelers, falling victim to the formidable Cleveland Browns. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The real drama unfolds in the communication breakdowns, sideline spats, and frustrations that have permeated the team. Hit that like button, because today we delve deep into the turmoil surrounding the Steelers and what it means for their quest in a challenging NFL season. Now, let's dissect the aftermath of the Steelers' clash with the Browns. An offensive stall, miscommunications, and a frustrated Deontay Johnson, these are the ingredients of the Steelers' Week 11 recipe for disaster. Join us as we unravel the complexities behind Kenny Pickett and Johnson's struggle to find sync, and what this means for the Steelers as they navigate the murky waters heading into a crucial Week 12 matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals. The Pittsburgh Steelers encountered a significant setback in Week 11, grappling with a challenging loss to the Cleveland Browns. Despite gradual improvements in their offensive performance leading up to Week 10, the team faced a complete stall against the Browns' formidable defense. The communication breakdown between quarterback Kenny Pickett and wide receiver Deontay Johnson emerged as a prominent issue, casting a shadow over the offensive dynamics. The lackluster display of the Steelers' offense, coupled with what appeared to be predictable and uninspiring play calling, highlighted the struggles faced by Pickett and his teammates. The Browns' defense, renowned as one of the best in the NFL, exploited the Steelers' conventional approach leaving them unable to mount a significant challenge. In the aftermath of the game, Johnson, visibly frustrated, responded to media analysis of his performance. Reporter Mike Fraser dissected film footage, pointing out what he deemed an elementary read error by Johnson. Johnson, in a retort, asserted that he ran the designated route correctly and insinuated that the media might sensationalize for attention. Backup quarterback Mitch Trubisky, providing insights after practice, acknowledged the breakdown in communication between Pickett and Johnson. Trubisky refrained from assigning blame but emphasized the collective responsibility of the team, including himself, in addressing the challenges faced on the field. Trubisky's comments shed light on the complexity of the offensive struggles, hinting at a broader communication problem within the team. The difficulties in connecting with not only Johnson, but also emerging star George Pickens, raised questions about Pickett's overall performance. Trubisky alluded to a need for alignment and emphasized the necessity of self-reflection and collective commitment to improvement. The statistics further underscored the Steelers' offensive woes, with the team ranking near the bottom of the league. Their total offense of 2,801 yards over 10 games averaged a modest 280.1 yards per game. Scoring only 166 points at an average of 16.6 per game highlighted the team's struggle to convert yardage into points. During the Browns game, Johnson's visible frustration extended to on-field interactions with head coach Mike Tomlin. The challenges faced by Johnson reflected the broader struggle of the Steelers' offense, grappling with a transition post-Ben Roethlisberger's era. Johnson's journey, attempting to regain prominence in the absence of Roethlisberger, involved adapting to different quarterbacks, including Trubisky and Pickett. Despite a promising preseason, the regular season brought a harsh reality check. The hamstring injury during Week 1 added to the adversity, sidelining Johnson for several weeks. The overall malfunction of the Steelers' offense remained elusive, with fingers pointing at offensive coordinator Matt Canada, Pickett, and Johnson. Trubisky's nuanced perspective, emphasizing the need for Pickett and Johnson to synchronize, hinted at a potential solution. The imperative for resolving communication issues looms large for the Steelers, crucial for any aspirations of a postseason run. But wait, the plot thickens! Deontay Johnson steps into the spotlight, addressing the elephant in the room. The communication issues with Pickett. The frustration is palpable, the struggles evident, and the sideline spat with Coach Tomlin adds fuel to the fire. Stick around as we dissect Johnson's candid admissions, the challenges faced in the passing game, and the collective responsibility the team must bear. The Steelers are at a crossroads, and we're here to break down every twist in this ongoing drama. The Pittsburgh Steelers are no strangers to drama this season, and the latest chapter involves wide receiver Deontay Johnson. 
After expressing frustration following a previous loss and a sideline disagreement with head coach Mike Tomlin during the recent defeat to the Cleveland Browns, Johnson addressed the communication issues with quarterback Kenny Pickett. Despite contributing to victories against the Los Angeles Rams, Tennessee Titans, and Green Bay Packers, Johnson's performance took a hit in the Week 11 loss. The Pro Bowler, who had been a key player when Ben Roethlisberger was at the helm, found himself on a different wavelength than Pickett during the Browns game. Acknowledging the frustration stemming from the team's performance, Johnson emphasized the need to make things right in practice and avoid pointing fingers. The receiver, with a candid admission of frustration, highlighted the challenges faced in the passing game, posting one of his lowest yards per target since entering the league in 2019. It's frustrating because we know how good we are, he said. To just keep starting the game the way we've been and obviously not progressing or whatever, it's like, what can we do? We gotta just keep playing. It's all we can do because we can't sit here and just look for excuses. Expressing the team's awareness of its potential, Johnson stressed the importance of perseverance and avoiding excuses despite the offensive struggles. While he refrained from providing specific details on communication breakdowns, Johnson's focus turned to the collective responsibility to elevate their game. Two plays were of particular interest, but Johnson wouldn't elaborate other than it was a communication issue. As for his spirited conversation with Tomlin on the sideline, he wouldn't give much detail. You all seen the game? I shouldn't have to say anything about that, via Joe Rudder of TribLiv. As Johnson implied, there's a ton of talent on this team when it comes to receivers. Johnson and emerging star George Pickens are the two main targets, but they have only caught four touchdowns so far in 2023. Tight end Pat Fryermuth had two scores before he landed on injured reserve for a five-game stretch. He had just one catch on a screen pass that he took for seven yards against the Browns. Running back Jalen Warren, when he is in, has turned into a security blanket receiver for Pickett and is third behind Pickens and Johnson for targets to this point in 2023. You all seen the game. I shouldn't have to say anything about that, via Joe Rudder of TribLiv. The Steelers tried to equip themselves with other options in the passing game in the 2023 offseason. They added Allen Robinson in a trade with the Rams and were excited about the prospects of Calvin Austin III. Unfortunately, neither has provided the spark Pittsburgh was looking for in totality. Austin holds the crown for Pittsburgh's longest reception of the season, scoring a 72-yard touchdown against the Las Vegas Raiders. Robinson has been a reliable third-down option for Pickett, but he still hasn't hit 200 yards receiving on the season and has no scores. The elephant in the room here is Pickett, who has noticeably struggled with several things necessary to playing quarterback in the NFL this season after his nearly flawless preseason. He's only completed 60.5% of throws in 2023 and has one game with multiple passing touchdowns. Now, the Steelers want to be a run-heavy team, so some of the passing stats will skew lower as they did in his rookie season, but they have to be able to pass when they need to, and that's been a problem. Maybe it's time for him to sit on the bench for a rest. He has been dealing with a rib injury and a knee injury this year, but Pittsburgh can't afford for this to continue. As we wrap up this roller coaster of Steelers revelations, make sure to hit that like button if you're as intrigued as we are. Subscribe for more inside scoops on your favorite NFL teams and drop your thoughts in the comments below. Can the Steelers overcome these internal challenges and emerge stronger? Only time will tell. Until next time, Steelers Nation, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more twists and turns in this season's Steelers drama. Thanks for joining us.